Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've just joined us. My name is Danelle and as you can probably tell from the title of this video, tonight is a little bit different. Back in December marks a year of me having had this channel and I'd originally planned to do this video then as a way to kind of mark that. However, life kind of got in the way a little bit and then it was now. So I thought the other evening, well, I've got more time on my hands now. So better late than never. <laughs> so uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So fact number one about Nell. And it seems this is probably one of the most hilarious points. I thought I'd get it out of the way now. When I was a kid, I was not only the girliest girl who ever girled, seriously, if it wasn't pink and frilly and floaty and pretty, I was not interested. Literally, I think I owned like one pair of jeans, which I was begrudgingly wear in the colder months when it got too cold to wear my, you know, pretty flouncy dresses and skirts. Not only that, but I was the biggest wimp in the world. I did not do scary whatsoever. In fact, I very clearly remember um, going to uh, Disney World in Florida with my family when I was 10 and going on uh, like one of those like little ghost train things. I can't remember what, that haunted mansion. That's the word, the Haunted Mansion ride. And being so scared, I literally buried my face in my mum's lap the entire way around and sobbed. And then in order to cheer me up, because it's my 10th birthday, my parents had to take me on the um, uh, It's a Small World ride just to cheer me up. Yes, PJ, I can hear you laughing from here, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to say I did not do scary one little bit. That was not me at all. Um, and then I have no idea what happened, um, but when I got to like 12 or 13, I completely changed pretty much overnight. My entire wardrobe went from, you know, pink, white and frilly to red, black and purple. <laughs> and yeah, I suddenly really got into horror films and stuff. My first two horrors I remember watching were The Others with Nicole Kidman and 13 Ghosts. And I remember being absolutely obsessed with those from that point on. And yeah, that was it. Gone were the pretty frilly princess days. And then it was now. Random facts about Nell number two. As well as being slightly obsessed with everything spooky and weird and macabre and all that good stuff. My other passion is dance. Now I have done a variety of dance styles over the years ranging from ballet to ballroom, um, salsa and burlesque but my main love, my biggest passion when it comes to the dance world is belly dance. Um, I got into it when I was probably about 15, I want to say, um, uh, and I actually kind of discovered it through a Shakira music video of all things. I remember standing in front of that TV with this Shakira music video and just being completely and utterly enthralled and entranced and thinking, oh my God, I want to do that so much. And at the time where we were living, there was nothing like that at all offering, you know, dance lessons or whatever. So I pretty much became self-taught from that point on. Um, yeah, um, I scoured the internet you know uh, a youtube tutorial videos 
um, instruction books and manuals, say anything belly dance that I could get my hands on, basically. And yeah, I absolutely fell in love with this hall. Um, started performing uh, when I was 20 and haven't really looked back since. Um, and to be honest, with the last kind of two years or so, obviously with COVID and everything, I've really, really missed performing. Um, the stage is definitely my happy place. Random facts about Nell number three. So I started this YouTube channel at the end of 2020. And I started it for a couple of reasons, really. Um, the first was just kind of to have a new kind of creative outlet in place of dance during the pandemic. And I found that I really, really actually enjoyed doing it and enjoyed meeting the people who I have through it. And yeah. <laughs> um, the second point is that I kind of did it because I wanted to gain confidence both in myself in general and with my speech. When I was very young I had quite a bad speech impediment, especially with my F's and that led to a hell of a lot of bullying when I was in school which you know, naturally really affected my confidence and self-esteem and I thought that if I could find some way of, of getting over that then I'd be happy and in all honesty I kind of wish I'd started this channel sooner because yeah, I've had nothing but love and support from you guys and it's really, really just like done absolute wonders since starting this. So thank you. You guys are amazing and I love you all. Random facts about Nell number four. So I met my husband, Bernie, um, at the end of 2013 and we met at a masquerade ball that a mutual friend of ours had um, arranged and <laughs> I know it kind of sounds a little bit like kind of like out of a fairy tale kind of thing or you know um, Bridgerton or something like that but no no we met at a masquerade and it was, I wouldn't say love at first sight because I don't really hold with that because the way I see it, you can't really love someone who you've only just met because you don't know them. But there was definitely an, an attraction there, like for both of us from the get to go. Um, <laughs> and you know we kind of flirted lightly um during, during the evening and then it was always a case of i wanted so hard to like approach him properly when we weren't dancing together but he always seems to be surrounded by people and so like you know the kind of shy introvert side of me was like oh i i want to approach him i i want to but no but no 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 no, no. <laughs> funny f funny enough he also i found it later felt exactly the same way about me so yeah it was kind of a case of like looking at each other from across the room every so often um and then I did probably the most you know modern <laughs> thing that you can do the next day I 
looked him up on Facebook from the event page and I dropped him a message basically saying hi um it was really nice to meet you last night um yeah um and then we just kind of hit it off and we went on a date like two or three days later and yeah it was that annoying case of obviously it happened in December and he was just about to go away to see his family for Christmas and I was about to go away to see mine and so it was kind of trying to find time to kind of actually get to see each other and get to know each other properly um but yeah we we, we we managed it and we talked all Christmas and he ended up passing me out kind of officially um in the February and he moved in with me probably about a year later a year and a half later and then in 2019 I decided to propose to him and um, yes I did the whole get down on one knee thing and he said yes <laughs> um, and I think we both knew for a long time before that that you know we were going to get married, we were going to spend the rest of our lives together um, and at that point it was just kind of almost like formality of who asked who, like we had discussed about it like a couple of times previously because you know I didn't ever want him to feel kind of less than if um I asked him or like you know or I feel less of a man or anything like that you know um but no he was totally cool with it I mean like I said it was more of a formality at that point like we've pretty much like discussed the kind of wedding that we wanted and everything anyway so it was just kind of making it kind of all official at that point really. We had originally planned to marry in the April of 2020 and then obviously Covid happened and the world shut down. Um, I think we must have rebooked it all about three times after that um and then yeah we finally managed to get married last august and it was honestly the best day ever it really was and i know it's the most cliche thing to say and every couple says it but yeah it was and it was so worth the wait and yeah he's just he's my best friend he's yeah He's my person. Okay, enough of the sappiness. Point number five. So, a few of the videos I've done, you may have noticed that I say, you know, how lucky we are to have like the medicine and the science that we do today, as opposed to, you know, a hundred years ago and there's a very good reason for that and that's because when i was a real little tot i almost died um i don't think i could have been much older than i don't know just gone one um we had gone to visit my godparents for christmas and I became very unwell with something called croup and it's a pretty common childhood illness but for whatever reason 
this particular time I got it really really badly um I was hospitalized and put on life support um I got taken into hospital on Christmas Eve and didn't come out till New Year's Day um and yeah I finally died from it um my parents say that it was the worst Christmas I'd ever had which you know unsurprisingly um and I know that I had it like relatively regularly on and off after that but it wasn't anywhere near as severe as that first time um I think it may well have been where I was so little and you know obviously it was winter my immune system wasn't that great because of my age I don't know but yeah that hit me really really badly and I'm just so so grateful that you know we have the NHS here and we have such an amazing you know a font of medical knowledge and science and all that because a huh, hundred years ago baby Nell would not have survived to her second birthday like that would have been it for me and so yeah incredibly incredibly thankful for the medicine and science that we have today random point number six i am very much in support of supporting mental health and everything that that goes with it i myself have suffered with mental health since probably about 20 21 years old and i know how challenging it can be and also how it could be lonely it can feel as well you know although you know that there are other people out there who struggle as well it is such a debilitating feeling you know whether you suffer with depression or anxiety or you know anything else mental health related it's so so difficult and yeah you can feel incredibly lonely through it i know i certainly have done um i've suffered with both with both uh depression and anxiety and although i haven't suffered with depression for a good couple of years like not like massively i do definitely still have flare-ups and that goes with anxiety as well um these days i find it slightly easier to, to manage the anxiety side of things but you know i'm only human like the rest of us and sometimes it can be really really overwhelming and so you know i like to think that i'm always here for anyone who you know, needs that extra bit of support and love and guidance because yeah mental health can be a really really tricky thing to manage um and especially the last couple of years with you know covid and everything that that's entailed you know it's yeah <laughs> i'm just i'm just really glad that there's more of an awareness of mental health now and although you know in some cases it is still stigmatized a little bit you know for the most part it's comforting to know that there 
are people out there who can you know, show love and support and compassion when things are just that little bit more difficult to manage. Round to point number seven. I absolutely love to travel. Um, for me, it doesn't matter whether it's getting on a plane and flying off to some distant foreign land or, you know, hopping in a car or on a train and going, you know, an hour, an hour and a half up the road, you know. Um, it's just nice to get away sometimes and yeah, I have definitely been feeling that kind of need to travel recently, especially after the last kind of couple of years where no one's been able to go anywhere and yeah, I can't wait to be able to start travelling and going places again. My number one top of the list of places to go to in the world is definitely New Orleans. Um, we were meant to be going on honeymoon there and then obviously again Covid. Hopefully next year, hopefully next year, fingers crossed. Random fact number eight, I am a massive bookworm. I absolutely love books, love reading, I always have done. Um, I love you know the usual and expected um horror um and you know kind of crime books and mystery books and uh fantasy is also a good to go to for me as well um I always have a to read pile as long as my arm uh, because I always get books for Christmas and birthdays and what have you and before I just never had much time to read them and so I'd always end up taking like a massive stack of them with me when we went away on holiday and then you know come next birthday or Christmas I'd get an entirely new stack so the cycle just kind of keeps going and going but yeah um yeah if anyone is ever in doubt of kind of what to get an L gift wise at all ever books are always a good way to go it may take me a little while to actually you know get around to reading them but they will be read in the end <laughs> Point number nine, my three biggest fears in the whole world are, in no particular order, clowns, needles and snakes. Um, clowns I just find generally really, really creepy. Um, I think it's something behind that permanent smile. It just feels so damn sinister. Um, yeah, I, it just really, really creeps me out. Um, needless to say, I have not seen any of the It films. Um, and I don't plan to anytime soon. <laughs> um, Needles, I think a lot of that has to do with where I've been in and out of hospital a lot when I was a kid and having to have like blood tests and stuff like that it just really really put me off them um and although I do have tattoos and I'm hoping to get more in the future I think that's slightly different because tattoo needles look very very different to the needles that they use in hospitals and so I think I can kind of like mentally separate the two of them when it comes to getting tattoos and stuff like that um yeah um needles just a no-no for me just can't do them they squick me out way too much um snakes I mean 
have you seen spikes? Like they just, they're just, they're just creepy. I, mm, no, can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. Um, I remember going over to a friend's place um, a couple of years ago now, and we haven't seen each other for a while. And I'd forgotten that she had snakes. And so she had gone into the kitchen to make us a cup of tea and I was sat on the lounge and I was sitting on the sofa and seeing this big old cabinet on the other side of the room with this big padlock on. And, you know, me being me, I was nosy and wanted to see, you know, what's worth keeping inside a, a, a cabinet with a great big padlock on it. So I go over to have a look i bend down and look inside and this suddenly this big old snake head staring back at me going hello just like ah oh, no i i don't think i've ever moved so fast than i did across that floor <laughs> just oh scared the life out of me and i learned a val valuable valuable lesson that day not to go nosing around Point number 10, I am a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community. I have only really in the last probably three or four years gotten really kind of comfortable with discussing it. I would never really say I've been in a closet, so to speak, but it's always kind of made me a little bit nervous because again like with mental health I think there can be a little bit of a stigma attached to it sometimes and so I've never really been too sure of the way people would kind of react or treat me when they find out that I'm bisexual um, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that a few of the guys that I've dated in the past have been like really weird and bizarre about it when they're found out. Very much in the kind of way of, oh, does that mean that, you know, I have to worry about women as well as guys? <laughs> and it's like, no love no if if i'm going to leave you it's because you're a douche not because i'm planning to run away with a winner with another woman don't worry about that okay <laughs> you know um and i don't think it was really until i met bernie and i was quite upfront with him fairly early on and i said look you know i'm bisexual is this going to cause any kind of issue with us like later down the line and he's like no not at all like you know you being bisexual is just another part of who you are like it doesn't matter to me and it shouldn't matter and it was like oh okay then you know a guy who actually like gets it and isn't weirded out by it at all you know i like you i i, I think i'm gonna keep you around <laughs> point number 11 i am very much a cat person don't get me wrong i love dogs as well um we had dogs while i was growing up and i absolutely adored them but given the choice i would pick cats any day and I'm really sorry to break it to you dog lovers out there and dog people, but nah, I'm sorry, but it it's cats any day for me. <laughs> Point number 12, I am very much a theatre lover. Um, I love anything and everything to do with the theatre. My two favourite shows and musicals in all the world are Phantom of the Opera and Hamilton. 
um, I think I've seen Phantom probably about five or six times on the stage now and it's just a musical that I could watch any time and never get bored of. Hamilton I saw in the I think it was the December of 2018 for the first time. Um, went in pretty much completely blind. I had a rough idea like the basic storyline and what it was about but hadn't heard any of the music before, had no idea the actual like you know characters or who was playing who or anything like that. Um, I fell in love with the musical about two minutes into the curtain going up and I've been pretty much obsessed with it ever since. Um, yeah, I would never turn down an opportunity to go to the theatre. I just love the entire experience, you know, it's just transportation to a completely new world and it's amazing. I love it. Point number 13, I am very much a geek, nerd, whatever definition you want to use, I'm definitely it. Um, growing up, I would often watch stuff like uh, Stargate SG-1 and Star Trek and Relic Hunt and things like that with my dad in the evenings and to be honest that's probably one of my favourite childhood memories. Um, these days I still absolutely love anything like that. I also love things like Firefly um, and then onto the fantasy side of things like Game of Thrones and stuff like that and uh, when I was younger I used to do a lot of LARPing or live action role play and I think the easiest way to describe that to someone who's not done it is improvised drama and the real joy you get with that is that it's something that you can be a part of and it doesn't matter what kind of like setup it is um you know it can be anything from um uh pirates to uh high end and fantasy to um to vampires and 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 mages and stuff like that and it's just an amazing escape from reality for you know be it uh afternoon or an evening or sometimes even the weekend and it's just a lot of fun you know you get to dress up you get to meet a ton of new people who are there for exactly the same thing and yeah it's, it's just a lot of fun I haven't been able to do it for a few years due to either lack of time or lack of money but it's really something that I want to get back into this year because yeah I miss it I miss it a lot it's a lot of fun point number 14 what got me into like scary stuff in the supernatural and true, true crime well the supernatural I think kind of started from the time when I had my first like paranormal experience um and I think at that point I was kind of hit with the choice of either you know you either block it off and try not to like think about it at all and have like nothing to do with that kind of thing whatsoever or I could you know be curious and ask questions and kind of delve a little bit more deeply into you know what it was that I'd experienced and the why and you know everything else and 
that just kind of really opened up an entire new world for me and here we are today and I've experienced so much and you know not every paranormal experience that I've had before has been the positive one but it's been an interesting journey and you know it's been a real eye-opener and I wouldn't change it for the world in terms of what sparked my interest in true crime <laughs> well um that didn't really come into being until like my late teens I kind of enjoyed watching stuff like uh, CSI and MCIS with my mum when I was growing up but the actual path into like actual true crime um, I think that actually came about when I was summoned to uh, jury service when I was 18 and ended up sitting in the jury for a two-week murder trial. I remember just before I went to law my first day, my parents kind of being very much, oh, you know, it's not anything kind of really exciting. Um, there's just basically you're just waiting around and getting very bored and then you either get sent home or put on like a really, really boring trial for like, I don't know, an unpaid, an unpaid bill or something like that. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> that, that was not the case for me. So now, what, you know, boring, mundane trial have you been put on to? Um, it's actually a murder trial and it's gonna go on for at least two weeks. Uh, <laughs> wait what now <laughs> yeah if there was ever a way to get anyone into true crime this would be it I was the youngest juror on that particular jury by far and it was a hell of an eye-opener let me tell you um yeah it uh it really opened my eyes just how evil and brutal people can be to other people um you know i found the entire process fascinating i mean we were shown the crime scene photos we had someone from the forensics team come in and you know um kind of describe what they found and you know the blood spatter and everything like that so that side of things was fascinating but the hardest thing was that during the trial members of the jury weren't allowed to talk about it like outside of the courtroom or you know to anyone who wasn't also on the jury and I mean I was 18 years old and this was a really really heavy thing to go through and to not be allowed to talk about it until afterwards I mean some of the details that we were given were absolutely brutal and I remember some days going home shaking and close to tears and my parents being like oh my god like are you okay it's like a, I'm fine I can't talk about it I'm sorry but I'm not allowed to and oh man that was just yeah that was hard that was really hard but oh boy yeah like I said before if there was any way of getting anybody interested in true crime that would be it Random fact number 15, I am, although a dancer, 
and everything like that. I am incredibly clumsy when, uh, when I'm not on the stage. Um, I have been known to fall over my own feet. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm a complete butterfingers some days and yeah, um, I'm just, yeah, I am used to swim it with, with the body when it's not dancing apparently. Um, the good news is that I can very, very easily laugh at myself. The number of times I've, you know, tripped over or knocked myself on the head or something like that and everyone will be like, oh my god Nelly, you're okay? And I'll just be laughing there in absolute hysterics like, I'm Bye, that was so funny. Ow, that was so funny. And everyone's just kind of staring at me like, why is she laughing at herself? She just hurt herself. What are you doing, woman? <laughs> but I don't know. I guess it's just my way of coping. <laughs> Random point number 16. I am what I would class as an introverted extrovert. Um, I absolutely adore spending time with people who I'm really close to. Um, I love parties, I love organising any kind of like you know social gathering um, but there does come a point where I kind of need that time to myself as well and that point where I can just become like completely introverted and closed stuff and I, yeah to me my downtime is important um it's how I kind of recharge um the last kind of couple of years I've definitely become more introverted because you know again because of the whole covid thing you know literally not being able to see people or go out and do things or anything like that it kind of made me a bit of a recluse I think and that's something that I'm planning on kind of trying to work on this year so you know I can become more of like the social butterfly and you know going out and seeing people and organizing parties and get-togethers and all that jazz because yeah at the heart of it that is who I am and I think I've kind of lost that a little bit and kind of lost myself a little bit over the last two or three years and now I can kind of start to feel that side for me coming back a bit more and to be honest I'm really excited about that. Number 17 I am a white witch um, I am incredibly spiritual. I have been from a very young age. Um, I think obviously when I was younger, I didn't quite understand what it really meant at that time. Uh, back then, I was very much into the whole like, you know, um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Charmed and kind of, you know, making my own spell books from, you know, um, uh, bits of paper and using uh, like the old tea bags to make it look like old and rustic and everything like that. And it wasn't really until I was probably about 12 or 13 that a friend of mine kind of introduced me more to like the kind of like the spiritual pagany kind of side of things and I kind of I kind of really resonated with a lot of that. Being out in nature is really important to me. Um, I love being in any kind of kind of like natural environment so the woodland or by the sea or anywhere like that just somewhere very natural and I feel a lot more free and just the 
ability to you know sit on the grass and feel the wind and the air on my face and feel the sun on my skin and you know I just yeah it's a really important part of me and that's something that I think will always stick with me when I was younger, um, I was bullied quite a bit for it. It was kind of, you know, that typical kind of kid thing of, oh, you're going to send me to a frog kind of thing. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's... <sighs> At the end of the day, kids can be assholes. I'm sorry, but they can. <laughs> um, and... Like I said, like the spiritual side of me, that's important to me, you know, and kind of being able to connect with nature and being thankful for what nature gives us because it's a beautiful thing. And I think it's so sad that there is still quite a lot of the stigma of, you know, spirituality and witchcraft and stuff like that because it's not an evil thing you know it's actually a very peaceful thing and I mean a lot of us believe that what you give out you get back threefold so if you were to I don't know curse somebody I wouldn't because that's not who I am but you know if you were to curse someone then you would get that bad luck back kind of with interest kind of thing and you know it's like I said you get back what you give out and I'm very much you know if you give out the, the positive you'll get good things in return and yeah I really believe that. Point number 18 my favourite seasons are spring and autumn. Um, summer I get incredibly grumpy if I get too hot um, yeah um, especially if there's no air conditioning <laughs> anywhere or I can't fall into the sea or jump into a pool I get incredibly incredibly grouchy and the winter I hate because you know it, it's winter it just kind of makes you want to curl up and hibernate and do nothing you know um and to be honest I get a lot of trouble with my knees uh, they get very, very painful, especially in the winter months. So, yeah, I much prefer spring and autumn. Point number 19, I absolutely love cooking and baking. Um, I think it's, for me, it's kind of a love language all of itself. Like, I love cooking especially for other people it you know makes me so happy to be able to make someone their favorite meal and see them really enjoy it um I actually managed to convert Bernie to liking chili um he only ever had really really bad chili when he was growing up which he was have at school and you know they would uh, be given this horrible kind of batch chilli that had like next to no taste at all and was kind of dry and gross and one of the first times he came over when we very first started dating I made us uh, chilli for dinner one evening completely unaware that you know he really was not a fan of chilli so he ate it to be polite and now it's actually one of his favourite meals of mine um apparently it's true what they say the way to a man's heart is through the stomach 
And finally, number 20, I am just a massive goofball at heart, really, when you really get to know me. Um, I love puns, I love dad jokes, so the stupider the better. Um, I'm pretty sure at least 60% of mine and Benny's marriage is just trying to make each other laugh as much as possible um yeah at the end of the day life is really short so why not spend it laughing well that's it guys that is 20 random facts about Nell um I really hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions at all that you would like me to follow up on then by all means leave them down below if you enjoyed this video then be sure to like and as mentioned before leave a comment and if you aren't already then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss when I upload. Until next time stay safe and sweet dreams. Okay.